Let's talk through the simulation. When the D string is plucked, many different traveling waves with many different frequencies pass up and down the string. These waves reflect at each end of the string. Some waves destructively interfere with themselves, others, if they have the right wavelength, constructively interfere and form standing waves. Because only certain wavelengths will form standing waves on strings, the string will only oscillate at certain frequencies. Let's look at the graph of wavelength versus frequency. The two quantities are related. Let's see how. The curve looks somewhat complicated, not an easy, linear relationship. Higher frequencies correspond to shorter wavelengths. But look carefully at the relationship. At 200 hertz, the wavelength is 600 millimeters. At 400 hertz, the wavelength is 300 millimeters. Do you see that the product of the two, 12,000 millimeter hertz, is the same? 12,000 millimeter hertz is the same as 120 meters per second. This is the speed of waves on the string. If you adjust the string tension, the wave speed increases. For a given wavelength, the frequency increases as well. This is how we tune the string to the proper frequency. If the string were simply oscillating at a single frequency, it would sound very hollow, like a computer chirp. The string is actually oscillating at many different frequencies at once. Let's adjust the harmonic number. This shows us all the different ways the string is vibrating at the same time. The sound produced by the string is represented in the graph on the right. The vertical axis of this graph is amplitude. The higher the up-down motion of the string, the more air is moved at that frequency, and the louder the sound we hear. The horizontal axis is the frequency of the note produced, the tone of that note, from low notes on the left to high notes on the right. The first harmonic has the longest wavelength. The wavelength is twice the length of the string, since we only see a half wave oscillating up and down here. This means it has the lowest frequency. The amplitude of the sound it is producing is shown here by the first peak on the spectrum graph. If we increase the harmonic number, we see a full wave represented in the string. This means its wavelength is equal to the length of the string and half the wavelength of the first harmonic. The frequency is twice the first harmonic frequency, and we see it here. Each harmonic is represented on the graph. What makes a violin sound like a violin is the relative amplitudes of these different harmonics. Different strings and different musical instruments will have different peak heights. Some of the harmonics will be diminished compared to others. So play around with different strings and look at the different harmonics. Try different string tunings. Keep an eye on the fundamental relationship between frequency and wavelength.